worship with us today. It's good to see you with us. Uh, we have some visitors. There are some little black books at the corner. Go ahead and get one out and let us know you are here, and it's always good to have visitors with you. And there's one right in front of you, sir. Okay. Um, got a couple of announcements that you need to know about. Betty Rainwaters. Tuesday meeting will be here at church. Betty Rainwater meeting Tuesday here at church. Um, the Alpha group will not meet today, but they will start next week. They're having some Alpha training. Uh, choir practice. None today, but everybody next Sunday. Okay, everybody. Uh, Birthday today, Lynn Bennett has a birthday. If you see him, tell him happy birthday. And Hilda has put up with Lee for 56 years in marriage today. <laughs> so congratulations. Pastor. Good morning and the Lord be with you. It is good to have everyone together. This is a... Uh, uh, a holiday weekend, a lot of folks are traveling, but we had a, a very large crowd at the early service and, and, a, and a very large crowd here, so it is good to have everyone together. Just a, a couple extra announcements to share. Um, on September the 9th, actually uh, after worship, excuse me, uh, September the 9th, that's next Sunday, uh, B John Brodowski, Bishop of the NALC, will be in uh, Salisbury at Salem Lutheran Church. You are welcome to attend. Information on that is in the bulletin. And uh, there is also going to be a bus transportation from Concordia if you would like to ride the bus. And uh, the bus, I believe, will leave at 345, and the event is at 330. Uh, so that is coming up. Uh, and, and a reminder to everyone, uh, we have, uh, especially to, to our young people, our new Sunday school classes began today for our young people. Some, uh, if, if you're in worship today and you were not in Sunday school, be mindful that, uh, or be mindful that next Sunday your classes may be in a different place. Um, everything is listed up on the uh, walls and the doorways. Um, especially if you're fourth through seventh grade, you are now meeting over in the youth building. So we want to make you aware of that. Um, And also a, a reminder, especially of our uh, choirs that begin next week, our youth and children's choir begins. Uh, that begins at 520. They will be meeting, a uh, new meeting place, 520, and it will be in the room where they have children's church. They will be meeting in the room that has children's church. And children's church, speaking of that, begins today. We always break from that in the summer. Children's church begins today. And uh, that will be after the children's sermon. And just remember that that is for second graders and younger, just for second grade and under for our children's sermon. And then finally, just a couple of prayer requests. We ask that you remember Kathy Smith, the wife of uh, Kim Smith. Uh, she is recovering from knee surgery. Um, and we also want you to lift up Pearl Character, who has been in the hospital since Wednesday. She's at Northeast uh, suffering with some pneumonia. Uh, so we ask that you be with her and be in prayer for Everett as well. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. It is good for us to be in God's house. Today we will not only hear God's word preached and proclaimed, but we will also celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. So let us make our hearts ready for worship together.
Let us stand and make our hearts ready before God. Trusting in the word of life given in holy baptism, we are gathered in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before the whole company of heaven and in the presence of God and one another, let us confess our sin. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, resisting your will in our lives. We have not honored ourselves in each other and in the world you have made. Reach out your saving arm and rescue us from sin. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will for your people and all creation. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all of your sins, and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Holy people of God, called through the gospel of Christ, enlightened by the Spirit, grace, mercy, mercy and peace be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you for your Son who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow his commands. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Children, come down front with me, and we'll have our children coming. something with me. A, a beautiful little chair, a little pink chair. Well, how about that? <laughs> who, who is this? Yeah, door after door. Everywhere you see, there's a picture of door. Everywhere out there, you see the picture of door. We found this beautiful chair the other day, so we picked it up. You never know me when you might need a little chair. And uh, so, today we at church, we began a new Sunday school year. And all in your Sunday school rooms, you have your own little style chairs. Those who are real small have little chairs. Those who are a little bit bigger have bigger chairs. But this would be a wonderful little Sunday school chair, I think. How oh, you like You like that chair? Yeah, yeah, I thought you would. OK, this is a, we, when we come to Sunday school, we learn a lot about Jesus. This is one of my favorite pictures of Jesus. I think I've shown this to you before. Uh, it's a beautiful picture of Jesus. Yeah, you see the picture of Jesus? <laughs> when we come to Sunday school, we sit in our chair, we sit at the feet of Jesus, and we learn about Jesus. And that's uh, why we come to Sunday school. We learn a lot about Jesus. All of you are still learning about Jesus. But you know, being a Christian is more than, means more than just uh, sitting. And sometimes we have to get up. <laughs> when we have to get up, we have to get up. And Jesus wants us to go out from Sunday school to go out and help other boys and girls too. And when we come to Sunday school, any of you work out with weights? Make big muscles? Well, you didn't make too big of muscles here. Anyway, when we come to Sunday school, Jesus makes us strong, makes us strong in the spirit. He makes us strong in the spirit so we can go out and help other people. Wow. Look at these shoes you got on. You had some pretty shoes. Yeah. I brought some shoes with me too. Yeah. Sometimes I see some of you going out and you wear shoes that flash. Some of you wear shoes that flash. See the flashy shoes? You, have you got some flashy shoes at home? But these are real pretty. A lot of times I see you in church, you're running through the church, and your shoes are just flashy. Yeah? And my favorite color is pink. Well, this is to remind us that we don't stay just stay in Sunday school and sit at the feet of Jesus. We put on our shoes and we go out and help other boys and girls learn about Jesus. We go out because Jesus makes us strong and goes out with us. So when we're going out, it's not just us, but Jesus is with us day by day. Okay, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for always being with us. Bless these children and be with them forever and ever. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay. Have a good Sunday school year here at Concordia. <laughs> well, the natives were restless today. That's okay. <laughs> Our Old Testament reading comes from the fourth chapter of Deuteronomy. So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, 
so that you may enter, live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has given you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take anything away from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God, with which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this nation is wise and, dis and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today? But take care and watch yourselves closely so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen nor let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. Word of God, word of life. Now let's read responsibly from Psalm 15, found on page 2 of your bulletin. Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? The one whose walk is blameless, who does what is righteous. Whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbor. Who despises a vile person, but honors those who fear the Lord. Who lends money to the poor without interest. The New Testament reading comes from the 17th chapter of 1 James. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation of shadow due to change. But be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and, on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are righteous and do not bridle their tongues but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion is pure and undefiled before God, the Father. Is this to care for orphans and wiz widows in their distress and to keep oneself unsustained by the world? Word of God, word of life. Seventh chapter. Now, when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around them, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat from anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups and pots and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked them, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And Jesus said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, 
The people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts of doctrines. You abandon the commandments of God and hold the human traditions. The Gospel of the Lord. One time there was a faithful Christian named Sam, and he had a long life of service to the church as Lord and the kingdom of God. And then at the end of his life, Sam arrived at heaven and stood before the golden gates. And St. Peter, St. Peter was right there to welcome him into heaven. And St. Peter said, come on in, Sam. We have been expecting you. You just follow me and I will lead you to your new home. So the two of them went tippy-toeing down the golden streets of heaven, and they were passing one house after another. Fancy mansions, places a king could live. And then he got, Sam got in there, and, and, and sent, Peter said, are you, are you hungry? Are you hungry? And said, well, I could eat. I could eat. And so St. Peter opened up his little brown bag, <laughs> pulled out a can of tuna fish, tuna, with a little bit of bread. He gave it to Sam. Now while Sam was eating his lunch, he could look way down and see the depths of hell. And boy, there was a crowd of people there. It was standing room only. And these people, they were eating steaks. They had lobsters. They had everything you could even imagine to eat. They even had chocolate cake. <laughs> was that? He didn't say anything. The next day, St. Peter said, are you hungry? Yeah. Well, he brought out the fish and, and the bread again. He looked down there and Sam could see, well, it was a holiday. I guess they have holidays in hell. <laughs> they were cooking outside on a wood fire. And they had hot dogs and hamburgers and grilled chicken. Everything for a holiday meal. And this time, Sam said, you know, Peter, I really enjoy, I really enjoy living here in heaven. It's wonderful. But the but the food, uh, I'm not so sure about <laughs> well, The people down there, they got everything. And St. Peter said to Sam, let's be honest. For two, does it really pay to cook? <laughs> I got one catch you later. <laughs> does it pay to cook? That's what we're talking about today. You know, the cook. Uh, in our lessons this morning, the Christian life is explained. And the word of God lifts up before us that, uh, yes, we come into the fellowship of the church, we enjoy our worship here, but we do not stop and stay here. We go out into the world to serve. We go out to serve others. In our reading from James, we are told, be doers of the word and not hearers only. We are called to a life of service for others, to work with others, to come into the kingdom of God and to share God's love with others. You and I are like a river. A river. God pours into our lives the abundance of his mercy, his grace, his forgiveness, and his love. And we do not keep it in ourselves. 
when all of God's blessings bubble up and flow out into the river of God's love to others. We are like that. In our, in our lesson this morning, it says every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights. We give because God first gave to us. And with all of the blessings we receive, we share them and shower them out on others. Doers of the word, not hearers only. The commandments of God are the foundation of our life. It is the commandments that sent to us our Lord Jesus. And in one of the windows back on the side, on the organ side back there toward the back, you see stone tablets. And I, I just noticed those this morning. And I, I, I grew up here, I've been seeing a few right down there ever since I was a little kid. And I really noticed them this morning. Those are the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are on that window back there. The commandments are God. Teaching, God's teaching to show us how to live in the kingdom of God. Now in our gospel lesson today, Jesus was talking to the teachers of the law. In the day of Jesus, many traditions, many traditions had been added to the commandments of God. Traditions sometimes replace even the commandments of God. And the, Jesus was asked, why do your disciples wash, not wash their hands? That was a tradition that was, had been added. Wash your hands. Wash your, you, and you thought Mama told you that. Oh, that was one of the traditions of the Jews. <laughs> wash your hands before eating. And Jesus says, with sadness, you can hear the sadness in his voice. The people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. Yes, it is God who gives us the banquet of our faith. We see that this morning, especially on our communion Sunday. For we know that it is God who gives us the body of his only son. It is God who gives us the blood of his only son, Jesus. It is God who prepares the table for us. Once there was a Methodist pastor named Thomas, and he was working in a, in a far country where there was war. The country had many rulers who were evil, wicked people, oppressing the people. And so a broke out war started to throw out the bad government. And the Methodist pastor was arrested by the, the police of the bad government and thrown into prison along with 10,000 other political prisoners who were working against the evil government. It was Easter Sunday morning, Easter, and the people of faith wanted to have a communion service. They had nothing, nothing. No bread, no cup of wine. They did not even have any water, nothing. So the, the pastor led a service of communion of the empty hands. He said, we have no bread here. And out in the world, many, many people do not know the bread of life. We have no wine of the blood of Christ. And many do not know of a Savior who gave his blood to forgive us all. And the pastor took put 10 bread and gave it to the members and said, the body of Christ 
giving for you. And a cup that wasn't not there, he said, the blood of Christ shed for you. And through each other, they took turns with empty hands passing the communion to each other. When the service was finished, a man came up who was not a believer. He said, I will join your service in the future. Here is something we need. And a father whose daughter had died in the war said, Today I see the meaning of faith. God prepares a banquet for us. It is here in the midst of our lives today. And we share this feast. One time, another an pastor, um, he died, and he arrived in heaven. And like Sam, he got the tour of the place too. And St. Peter met him, come on in. And the two walked down the street, past these many beautiful houses that Sam saw. And, and the pastor noticed a, a lady sitting in front of one of the big houses was just a poor widow who had served by taking care of her family. Another big house, the owner was a poor man who had worked as a fixer of shoes, a shoe repairer, a very humble person. Another house was a, some, had a team there, and this young woman had spent many, many hours working as a volunteer in the hospital to help others. And another house, a big, big house, was just uh, for a small child to serve the Lord in a simple, humble way. And so this preacher got here, well, if these people have all these fancy houses, just imagine my place will be, wow, great. <laughs> so St. Peter said, well, here we are. And the pastor looked around, he couldn't find any, any big fancy house. And right over there was a little ranch-style house, three bedroom and two bath with a sunroom. <laughs> he was shocked. Said Peter, he said, I don't understand. We passed all these fancy houses with very humble people. I am a famous preacher. I have preached and brought in thousands to the church. And said Peter, that's true, and we appreciate everything you have you have done for the church. We thank you for your service. But you had an easy job. You did not do hard work. All those other people that we passed, they did the work that was hard. Every day, they were on their knees praying for other people. And every day, they were using their hands in love help other people. God's perfect gift, our Lord Jesus Christ, is here among us now. He is at the table of the Lord that we will share soon. And God gives us these blessings May you and I invite others to come with us into the kingdom of God. The peace of God that passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus.
us go to our Lord in prayer. Holy Father, today we ask you to hear us. We pray especially today for the community of West Rowan High School as this past week they tragically lost two students, friends, and classmates. We pray specifically for the family and friends of Terry Johnson and Cody Ives and all of those in the West Rowan community. Be with them, guide them, and continue to give them the sense of hope even in times of darkness. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. Holy God, we pray for those who are sick, those who are hurting, those who are going through treatments, and those who are awaiting that day when health and good and better health will come. We pray especially for Pearl. We pray also for Kathy and for Kay, a visitor among us who recently had knee surgery, knee replacement. We pray for F.L. Fouts as he prepares for surgery later this month and for all of those who are going through treatments, physical therapies, and therapies of any kind, especially Charles and all of those who we now name in our hearts before you. We beg you, O oh Lord, to send grace where it is needed, healing where it is desired, and wholeness where there is brokenness. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Holy God, we pray for all churches that are gathered together today, all churches that are centered around your holy word. We ask that you would bless this congregation and our Sunday school ministry, our ministry of faith formation. We thank you for our teachers. We thank you for all of our learners, regardless of their age, from those from infant to adult. And we thank you, Lord, for the ministry of music in this congregation and for all who carry it out. Be with us, Lord. Help us to be centered on you and your word in all things. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And finally, Lord, we pray for those who travel in this holiday weekend, for those who are seeing family or for those who are seeking rest and recreation and even recreation. We ask that they will be created anew in heart, body, and soul, and that you will provide for them safe travel. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. Generous, life-giving God, we praise you for your wonderful creation and your all-sustaining care. Receive these tokens of our gratitude, and may our lives reflect the goodness and love shown in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing which we bless. And we, the many, throughout the earth, we are. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on us and, in, and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the salvation you have granted to us through Jesus, the Word made flesh, the child of Mary, the light of the world, our Emmanuel. Send the spirit of your Son into our hearts, that as your beloved children we may welcome our Savior who comes to us in his body and blood. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Christ welcomes you to his holy table. Amen.
bursting. <coughs> May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen each of you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Radiant God, with our eyes we have seen your salvation, and in this meal we have feasted on your grace. May your word take flesh in us, that we may be your holy people, revealing your glory made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. by the sacrament of the table, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Now go forth with this blessing. That may the God of all peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with each of you and bless you always. Amen. Go in peace and share Christ to the world. We will. Thanks be to God. <laughs>